Alright guys, welcome back to some more Warno. Today we're going to be doing a little deck breakdown of 5th Panzer. Now, at the moment in this uh, current meta, it's not really one of the top divisions, but we're still going to go over it anyway, because I've been enjoying playing it at the moment. And I think with a few changes coming up, it could be a bit of a stronger division. So we're going to run through all of the tabs and like a standard kind of build, and then looking ahead we can look at a few different builds you could maybe make up and uh, create with it and uh, yeah we'll get started on the logistics tab so uh, pretty standard got the field depot M577 which is your more armoured CV to your availability 8 points got the Iltis Furring so your Jeep CVs pretty standard to a lot of divisions but you got good speed on them and free availability which is a massive bonus now you've also got the Fux Fuhrer. Uh, this is a really handy unit. You can see it's got smoke on the side, which is really helpful to have. You've got good speed, it's amphibious, it's got medium MG, which doesn't really count for much, but having a little bit of armor and the speed is nice. So what I'd usually do in terms of CVs is I would take the Hurung and a Fux Fuhrer. So I've got five in the Logi tab. And then for our supply component, I'll usually end up taking the standard like Unimog trucks, 500 points. Really handy if you get to your front lines and it's not too much of a cost investment. And then you can grab a Mancat as well. These guys, obviously, 80 points expensive, but 2,500 supply per card, which is really nice to have. Um, kind of the bigger ones, and you can ferry supplies from these using the Unimogs to your front line. Now of course this sometimes changes around, if you have plenty of CVs in your other tabs you can maybe drop the Fux and you can get out like another Mancat or you can go another Unimog, kind of more of a supply heavy build if you're planning on investing heavily into artillery. But for ranked play I generally like to have plenty of CVs so I can't run out and lose a game um, and this will be built for 1v1 deck. Okay, starting with the infantry tab, uh, we've got a few different options here. It's not an extensive amount of units, but we've got a decent amount of slots, four 1.1s, and we can make good use of them. Now, specifically for this matter at the moment, it's more about getting infantry out in the field, and that is going to affect how we build this tab. We'll kind of run down the units from the top to start with, though. So we've got Feldjäger here, your kind of standard military police unit. Only four men got the uh, MP5, which is a really nice weapon, but not really great when there's only four of them. However, you've got the military police trait, so it's really good for suppression regeneration bonus, which can pair quite nicely with your heavier tanks. So it's definitely something to consider. And here you've got the MG3. Um, I don't really touch this, to be honest. The ground range is nice, but with so little damage and suppression and not great accuracy, uh, I don't think this is worth it at all. Maybe later on they could be. Maybe being able to target helicopters or something, it might be a little bit better, but for the moment, I would avoid this unit. Uh, we've got the CVs now, so we'll run these all over together and we can just compare them a little bit. So first off, we got the Panzergrand Führer. Which obviously got AT and AA and six man strength. So honestly, it's pretty good. You do pay for it though, 100 points. But having a, uh, a red eye, even if it is, you know, it's pretty terrible. But having both AA and AT is kind of nice. You've got a few transport options in terms of the Marder 1A2 and the Marder 1A3. Generally, you kind of want your CVs to be cheap. So the Iltis would be the one you go for with them. However, we look down here at the Jaeger Führer, obviously only four men in the squad, but you do get a nice Carl Gustav, 750 meter range, 16 pen. And these guys are fairly expensive, I mean 15 points more, it's not a small amount, but you do get more availability, which is really important. And so when we were looking at how many CVs you want to take in the Logi tab earlier, you've got to take into account what CV you're taking here in the infantry trap if you are going to take one. Got the Pioneer here as well. So these might be uh, mispriced a bit at the moment. Um, 
I think this might be a mistake, this pricing, before any changes. So this is probably going to go down uh, in the future, hopefully soon. As you can see the Pioneer Fuhrer, five man strength. Different guns and stuff, but Kalki staff as well. But regardless, I'd probably go with the Yei Fuhrer. Um, because you have the, the free availability, and I think availability is king. Now, onto the, the mainstay of the infantry. We've got Panzer Grenadiers here, the Carl Gustav, Panzer Grenadiers in the M113, and the Panzer Grenadier Marder. So, the Carl Gustav squad gives you this really nice AT weapon with that long range and, well, decent pen, it's not crazy. And you get uh, IFE transports as well in terms of the Marders. These are a really nice unit to have. Nice get out on the field. I'll usually bring them in the Marder 103. Stack a card of those in. And then you can see we've got five cards of Panzer Grenadier Marders here. And then we get all the, the Marder options, the ones with the Milans. Um, I think this is a bit of a, uh, a bug at the moment. The Milan variants are priced 10 points above the standard variants. But that shouldn't be remaining, that should be changed, or it's only a 5 point tax. And this is uh, really dependent on division matchup and kind of the meta you're in. Uh, the Milans can be really handy for dealing with um, like some other armoured vehicles or IFEs and supporting your tanks. And if you know your matchup going against, you want to pick either the 1A3 or the 1A2, depending on what you're fighting, um, what like penetration you'll be going up against. But for the moment, I usually only bring one card of the 1A3s. Because something you have to consider as well is these guys are only 5 strength squad. It's pretty weak. Panzer Grenadier Card Gustav, only 6. And then we have a look at the Panzer Grenadiers. We've got a 9 man squad here. Put that to the side. So you've got a big, beefy squad. And HP is kind of king at the moment. HP that you can spam out. You've got decent AT. Penetration's not great. But you've got all right suppression, really nice accuracy at 60%, and a pretty decent range at 675. So usually, you kind of want to spam these out just in the Unimogs because the MW M1 3 has only got the medium MG, which is you know pretty useless. They do get smoke, which is nice, but you cannot sell this, and you can sell the Unimog, which is nice, 20 points towards your next squad. Moving further on. We've got the Sisherings here, really cheap, spammable infantry. Um, obviously these guys are at the poor experience, so you can see the stat debuffs they get there. Really not helpful for the squad, but they are cheap, and if you do want a little bit more spam, you can definitely bring these guys out to kind of fill your lines up a bit with more, more bodies on the front. Next up we've got the weapon teams, so we've got the M40A1 here. Which is, yeah, good fire support, pretty cheap. Uh, range isn't crazy good, but 1400 meters isn't bad at all. 17 penetration is really nice. And it does do HE damage, so you can start hitting infantry with this as well. They're great little fire support weapons to get out. Um, and I could definitely see them having a place in the, in the current meta, so these guys are worth considering. And then we've got the Milan one the Milan 2 teams. Now for these units Milan 1 is really cheap and it's actually yeah not too bad to get it out but I generally wouldn't consider it in this division especially when you have access to the Marders with Milans. Um, I just don't think these are worth it for what you get which isn't a lot. Uh, maybe in the future but for the moment definitely not. Milan 2 is definitely a better option can see 24 pen, really nice to have. Got a ton of different transport options you can choose from. This is a, a possible choice if you're going up against maybe another armored deck, um, but you do have a really strong tank to have as fifth panzer, so you're going to consider that when you're picking what 80 options you're going to have in your infantry tab. Moving on to the Jaeger, very similar to the Panzer Grenadiers we had a look at earlier, but instead these guys are 11 strength, which is great. You've got a ton of rifles, you've got that MG3, so it's a lot of fire that's going to be going down range, and these guys are easier to keep alive than other squads because you've got so many men in the actual squad. And so I'd usually grab two squads of these as well. So you see, I've got 36, I 
Jaeger and Panzer Grenadiers. Um, like big squads so they can really fill in my front line as I need them to. And then we've got our kind of anti infantry units down the bottom here. We've got the Pioneers, the Satchel Chargers, and then the Pioneer Flam with the Hand Flam Patron, which is um, just a <laughs> pretty bad flash unit. Um, but it can be effective, and you've got the MP2s as well. So SMGs aren't too bad at the moment, but again, the nice thing is really high uh, strength on the squad. So I'd probably bring either Pioneer or Pioneer Flam depending on what you want to do. Um, I tend to go with the Pioneer Flams because I don't like Pioneers too much at the moment, but this could really change around depending on the map and like where you're fighting and stuff, Pioneers could be more useful. And then you've got a really nice transport option here actually because the Fuchs is okay, you get smoke, I only got the medium MG though, but for five more points Getting the Milan one on there is actually a really nice deal. Spamming these in at 25 points, you can kind of spread them out all over the place. They've got really good speed, so you can move about as you need to. You can get maybe some flanking shots, but it's really nice utility at a low cost. So I'd probably add those guys in as well. And then last but not least, you've got the Pioneer Ambrist, which again, really nice unit. They've got the shock trait, fucks Milan and stuff. They're really worth considering. Because, um, yeah, 10 man strength. The armbrist is. Yeah, it's okay. Not great. But a pretty good rate of fire on it. But, um. No, I don't take them in my deck at the moment. So you can see we've got a pretty extensive infantry tab there. 64 units. It's definitely a lot. And we can look up upvetting some of these units if we want to. But I usually leave upvetting until the end of my deck. Okay, onto the arty tab. Got a few options here, it's better than some, but not great. So we'll run down from the top, go over all these units. Uh, we've got these 120mm Tempala mortars. We've got some decent HE and suppression on there, decent range. 120mm mortars are really nice. And for only 45 points, not much to worry about. You can stack some cards in if you'd like them. I usually don't take these ones as I um, I don't want to fiddle around too much with the micro that you need um, because usually you keep the transports with them, load them back up, move them around so they don't get counter batteried. Um, so really you're looking at 65 points of investment when you're buying into these units. But the 4 Picard is nice. Down here we've got the 105mm howitzers. These are your kind of quick targeting, quick firing. Uh, little guns, and they can be great when you have quite a few of them. You can only get one card, but for 60 points you can't really go too wrong. Um, range isn't too great, but for kind of a reactive unit which can punish or push fights into your favour across a, a small area of the front line, they're going to do great. Moving on, much bigger guns here, we've got this 155mm, the Toad variant. Uh, they're great. Really good range, good HE, a decent self length for 4, and only 120 points. Obviously, you're spending the 20 points with the Man Cat as well, so you're going to bring these together and keep them together to micro them around. Uh, so, 140 points for this deal. It's, yeah, a really nice deal. Can't really go too wrong with it. Panzer Morsers. So, these are just the self propelled version of the 120mm Tampalas, and this is usually what I go for actually. Um, and there's a couple of reasons. One, it cuts down on the micro I need to do to keep them alive. And two, these can move around uh, well, much more easily than the toad mortars. And that's really important when you're playing a kind of armoured or IFE heavy division. You can move the mortars around quite freely, smoke in different areas and be across the front line without having to buy a ton of them and positioning them all over the place. So I usually go for a, a card of the Panzer Morsers. Then we'll move on to the MLRS. Got the Lars 2. This is your class militians uh, multi-rocket launcher. And it is useless uh, <laughs> at the moment. It doesn't do anything right now. Um, I would just avoid these until they've fixed MLRS. You have got two cards and they are cheap, but again, it's useless, so we'll just kind of forget about that. The Mars does actually do something. It can be 
pretty handy in very particular situations. Um, so if you've got a stalemate or a very heavily defended area you want to hit, this is the perfect um, kind of unit for it. You've got really good range, good HE and great suppression. You want to hit an area and then push it straight away afterwards. So I'd usually bring one of these in actually and you have no reason to up that on artillery so keep it at base vet. And this would actually usually be my standard kind of running of what I would take in terms of my arty tab. It's very light. Um, but we'll move on to the self-propelled guns. Here you've got the M109. This is basically the equivalent of the FH 155, uh, but self-propelled. So if you don't want to do that micro attach, you can go for the the gun variant. It's got some decent armor on the front and stuff. And yeah, they're fine. Um, I'd prefer probably the 155s just because they're cheaper, and I don't mind microing these big guns around. And then finally, we got the M110. Um, these guys are they're okay. Uh, nothing too special. Uh, obviously, pretty good HE, but kind of got a small salve length of three, very low ammo. Um, I just I don't think they're as effective as other units, and only one per card is is pretty rough. If you bring two of them and get them out as a pair, like maybe, but that's such a big investment in kind of activation points and points in the game. Um, I don't think they're worth it at the moment. So this would be what I would run in my artillery. Okay, starting on the tanks. So again, we'll run from top to bottom. Starting off the M48. Uh, your cheap spammy tanks. Uh, they're not great, but they do help out a lot in this matter because getting cheap fire support is very important at the moment. See, they've got this reservist trait, which is not good at all. Um, they uh, just take more suppression and it can get routed kind of easily, but you're not too bothered because they haven't got a lot of armor. They're probably going to die pretty soon. Uh, eh, you don't really mind too much. You can always stick some failed Jaegers with them if you bring them. So M48 is great to bring in. You've got 12 per card, so you can kind of whack some of those guys in um, to give you that fire support you need across the front line. Next up we've got the Leopard 1A1A1s. Um, these guys are kind of like the class cannon units, and this goes for both the Leopard 1s. 16 pens, really nice. Range isn't great at 2100 meters, and 7 armor is really not good for a tank. But in groups, these guys can be pretty effective with that 50% accuracy. Obviously that's got scaling on it too. And these can be a nice unit to spam out as well. Unfortunately, you don't get any heavy MG, only two of the uh, the medium ones. So for the moment, I don't take them in this deck, mainly because the fire support from the M48s is just that much better. Moving on to the HGM vehicles. Um, they're not great. You're paying 95 points for a very expensive uh, HGM, which is okay. Um, there's nothing really to write home about. The free armor on the front is nice. You can survive some shots, try and retreat out of there, but I definitely wouldn't recommend the Jaguar 1. Jaguar 2's uh, definitely a bit better because you get the, the Toe 2, 25 pen, 65% accuracy. Obviously a really nice HGM, but 105 points it is expensive and I just don't think you get enough value out of it really. Next up we've got the Leopard 1A5s and we've got our CV tank here and this Leopard 1A5, 2 per card which is obviously really nice availability on this so I usually grab a card of those. I think that puts our CVs up to 10 which is loads, probably more than a lot of people take but I think it's worthwhile. You can always sacrifice one or two if you need to get more of a single type of unit in. And then we've got the standard 1A5s. These guys obviously have got 60% accuracy which is really nice. Decent motion accuracy, only 10% loss there and the full range which is super helpful because at 2100 meters they'll have 17 penetration. So a little bit more than the 1A 1A1s. Uh, and these guys are really nice to have kind of that mediocre fire support and can help you deal with kind of the medium or even heavy tanks if you mic them correctly. 
So I usually put a card of those in. And then here we get to the big boys. The Leopard 2A3s and 4s. So we've got the CV tank to start with. I don't bring this in. 300 points is quite a lot and one per card. I've already got enough CVs everywhere else. I, I don't want to be spending that much on the on a CV. So we go straight to the standard Leopard 2A3. And I usually just kind of grab all the cards of these. And I would upvet them as well. With heavy tanks, you kind of want to have like a minimum of two vet. It's just not worth it on the battle veterancy. The decreases you get from cohesion and suppression are just too brutal for an expensive unit to be worthwhile. So let's have a little look at the 2A3. You got some really nice front armor at 19, good penetration on that gun, good accuracy at 60%. Most importantly, motion accuracy also matches at 60%. This means you're not going to lose any accuracy when you're on the move. And so having these guys roaming about, and if you can keep on top of the micro, you can move them backwards and forwards into like firing range and out firing range and keep them moving all the time and you'll stay accurate. Obviously that takes micro and if you can be on top of it, it can be super helpful for maneuver warfare and swift attacks, coming out of cover, reversing back into cover. Like all these little things which the 2A3 is really capable of. It's kind of worth exploring and exploiting the uh, the benefit of that stabilizer. So yep, we've got plenty of those and then I usually, kind of just for the memes, grab a 2A4 card as well. Um, obviously we can compare this to the 2A3. You've basically just got a bump in the armor, penetration, and accuracy. So uh, we'll put it at base so we can compare properly. Um, so a 5% boost for the static and motion accuracy and then one for armor and one for penetration. And so 21 pen is really nice to get. Um, you're going to be facing up against pretty much every tank in the game. You can do all right and then 20 front armor as well. It's really nice but weirdly enough you can go to the two vet and then up to elite which gives you 10 rate of fire and 71% accuracy, including the motion accuracy, which is insane. Like you can just keep this thing moving all the time and it's never missing. Whereas on uh, Elite for the 23s, 66%, pretty damn good. 62%, not too bad. But um, yeah, this is the real heavy hitter. I usually don't bring it in that much only in very specific circumstances or I'm just winning loads but it's a fun unit to have about so I put it in the deck. Okay, Recon. Um, pretty sparse. Um, it's kind of one of the weaker tabs of the division but you do get free activation points which is nice. Now I always try to bring in some helicopter Recon. I just think they're really handy. They can do things that a lot of other Recon units can't and in a pinch they can really help you out. And then moving on to that we got our infantry recon options. So we've got the Jaeger Alphara which is a high HP infantry unit and they get the M113A1 uh, which is also a recon unit. And So you kind of got like a nice doubled up set of recon units here which will give you 12 total recon units including the transport which can actually be a really nice option. And these Jaeger Alphara are survivable units with the 10 HP. So they're definitely a worthwhile consideration and I usually toss up between those and the Alf Clara. Um, Alf Clara is kind of unfortunate being at 4 HP and no recon transport option. They do get a heli one which is kind of a nice touch but I don't think it's quite worth it. And then the final infantry recon unit is the Fern Sparrow which is a nice unit, it's pretty cool got the uh, MP5 SDs, which is like the gun, HK21, and the G3, little sniper rifle there, like very cool unit. Obviously they've got Special Forces Shock, the Air One Deployed, and then the GSR trait, so stacked full of traits. But when I'm so limited on the recon units I'm bringing in, I kind of just prefer the quantity and the HP of the Jaeger of Clara. And then finally the vehicles, the Fuchs Razit, Exceptional optics, 40 points. It's pretty nice. Um, it could go well with your tanks, 
um, but I think I prefer to bring in the looks so I can do some backline shenanigans, giving you a bit of offensive and staying power in the early game when your div division is going to struggle a bit. Okay, time for the AA. Uh, again, pretty sparse. Um, not too many options. You got a Fliegerfaust here, which honestly, for the price, isn't too bad at all. Um, so I'd grab a card of those. You got 16 availability. Really nice. Just kind of spam all over the place. They're cheap, expendable, and you can make a good defensive network with them. So they're great to have. You've got the Gepard. Really nice uh, SPAAG. Obviously, it is radar, so you've got to be on top of your micro. And that goes for both the West German divisions, actually. You want to stay on top of your micro or you will be punished. And then we've got the Roland 2 and the Roland 3. Now, the Roland 3 is a really nice AA piece. Um, it's kind of got a slow reload and only a salvo length of 2, which isn't great, so they can get overwhelmed. So it's important to have a decent network of multiple Rolands in order for them to be effective. Now, what I usually do is I go Roland 3 and then I bring in the Roland 2 as well. And I'll speak about why. So, the Roland 3 being radar, if I have a bad game and my micro is off and I get all my AA seeded, I'm going to get air bullied and all my tanks are going to get destroyed. Now, if I have a backup in the Roland 2, which is not radar, see up here, it is a manual guidance system, I'm not going to get hit by seed. And having that paired with the Roland 3 is actually really nice. A little bit cheaper, still a really good missile, uh, and it's got a good salvo. Well, same salvo length, it's not great, but enough of these out and you're going to do well. So usually I'd get these guys in and I'd just up that them. And I do that because I'm not going to... I'm not going to buy six Roland 2s. If I do, I've done something very wrong. And say I'm not going to buy four Ronin 3s if I got Ronin 2s as well, so I might as well just up there and get a tiny little bit of boost on these stats, it's not too important. But you take anything you can get, especially if you're not going to spend the money on all of them. Next up, we've got the helicopter tabs. So here, uh, again, not a lot of options. We've got these bow, bow pars um, with the hot one and the hot two. Uh, yeah, a decent option. Again, you're not lacking for dealing with tanks in this division. You've got your 2A3s, um, you've got your Marder Milans, your 1A1s, your 1A5s. So I just don't think these guys are really necessary to bring in. Instead, you probably want to go for the Apache. Obviously one per card and stuff, but it's a really nice unit to help you deal with stuff in your back lines or being offensive with it. I usually just bring one of those in for that one activation point slot, because I want to use that up. And this just gives you a great unit for uh, kind of di diverse helicopter action. And obviously you don't get a lot of them. <laughs> okay, finally we've got the air tab. And here we've got a few different options. I generally don't go too heavy on the air for uh, West Germany at the moment. I think some of these units still need some work. But we definitely want to get an AA jet. Um, sometimes I go for the F-104 and um, it's okay, it's a little bit faster, but you lose 20% of the ECM, which is really rough. Um, so instead I prefer the, the F-4F, that 20% ECM extra, up to 30% is, is really nice to get and they're obviously not great, but it gives you something to contest the air at least. And then I actually go with the Tornado IDS MW1. Really fun unit. Um, could do with a shorter reload on the on the bomblets here, but um, it can help you out in a pinch. Um, I generally wouldn't recommend it for like competitive, but um, it's a really enjoyable unit. Obviously, it's got its own AIM-9Ls, 30% ECM, really good speed. It's just a fun unit to bring in. I'll probably take one of those and then. I probably take a Alpha Jet rocket as well, and I can run over why now. It's um, rockets are great utility, great for dealing with infantry or doing some damage to tanks or AA things like that. And then the gun as well, the Mauser BK27, is pretty decent against helicopters. You're not always gonna do one run and take them out, 
but you can do some decent damage, maybe kill one or two off, and so they're really good in the early game for picking off units, getting some good trading value out of them, and they're only 120 points. We'll run over a few of the other units in here. You've got this F4F, and you got two cards of four of them, you've got a lot of them. But yeah, it's a decent AT plane. Accuracy's not great, um, but you can usually get a couple missiles off in one run. You've got some decent ECM, and um, if you're going for like an anti-tank plane build, sure, you could bring them in. Um, I probably wouldn't. You've got so many other tank options in the deck, I just don't think it's worth it. Next up, Tornado IDS HE. I'm not a huge fan of this plane actually, like the gun's really nice, you've got that 2x Mauser, the bombs are a big size, but you've only got 3 of them, and so you kind of sometimes get RNG'd out of actually hitting your target, which is kind of shit. Next up, Tornado IDS Cluster, yeah, decent cluster plane, um, you've got good speed, rips in ECM, you've got 5 cluster bombs, so yeah, going to be doing some decent damage with it, it's kind of worthwhile, but again, do you need more AT options in this deck? I would argue no. And then finally we've got the F4F HE1, uh, which has got the 12 227 kilogram bombs. Uh, yeah, a lot of bombs, but um, I'm not sure it's really worth it either. 270 points, so expensive. Obviously a lot of HE power here, so that can be pretty handy. If you want a big bomber, three per card, sure. But um, I generally avoid this unit as well. And then finally, F16 Seed. I mean, it's a really nice unit. 40% uh, ECM, 65% arm missile here with two of them. Um, yeah, going up against Radar IA, it's going to be great. But um, because we don't bring a lot of planes in this deck, and not a lot of helicopters either, I generally don't bring the Seed in. If you're going to build this differently, you went for like an air spam, I probably would bring the Seed but I just don't think it's that useful in this division. Alright guys, so that's kind of it for my deck overview of 5th uh, Panzer. Um, we had a couple points left at the end there, so I kind of just grabbed the, the Fern Spire, but those kind of two extra points, I'll leave it kind of free to where you would kind of like to put them. you got another two point slot there in the tanks, so you can grab another 284, more CVs, left ones, two one point slots in the arty tab you can kind of mess around with. You've got this recon one, which could be pretty meaningful. You can get like Fox Razit or something in there. And then you've got the helicopter one as well. So you can grab another Apache or the Bopars. So you kind of got that slot for a bit of freedom about what you want to do with it. Um, but yeah, I kind of hope you guys enjoyed that run through of 5th Panzer. And then I'm hoping soon I can do some more videos on this deck and kind of explaining some of the tactics and the openings and going more into detail about the tank plays with the, the two A3s and using that, that motion accuracy to the best of its ability. But uh, thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you next time.